Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, I'll be talking about plan pooling, another fun and unique way of crocheting. So before we begin, I'm going to explain a real simple way of what plan pooling is. Plan pooling is basically a technique where the same number of stitches per color is intentionally repeated using multicolored pooling yarns, such as the Red Heart Super Saver or the Karen Simply Soft yarn. And with these yarns, it'll enable you to produce a specific design or color pattern. The term pooling refers to the method of gathering the same colors together while forming a pool to achieve a specific sequence or your desired pattern. I've seen other videos using the moss stitch teaching, but today I'm going to show you how to work up the argyle pattern using any stitch you like. Okay, so now let's get right into it. For this tutorial, I'm using the Super Saver Jumbo by Red Heart. It is a category 4 yarn and it calls for a 5.5 millimeter hook. I am using a 5.5, but for this method, I would strongly advise you to play around with your hook size and your tension, and I'll show you why in a minute. Work up your slip knot. You can start at any color you like. And here I have my 5.5 millimeter hook. Now, in order to achieve my argyle pattern, I'm going to work a total of 59 stitches or 59 chains. I've just completed 59 chains and in order for this pattern to work, you must end your last chain on the same color that is on your hook. So go ahead and chain up until the end of that last color. Once you've worked all the way till the end of that color, make sure you have a new color on your hook to start your next row. Now for row one, in this tutorial, feel free to use any simple stitch you like. I'll be using the half double crochet stitch and without adding any more chains, I'll insert my hook through the second chain from the hook and work that half double crochet stitch. So this will be my first blue stitch. Now continue to stitch across while counting each stitch per color. So here I have my fourth stitch and on the next stitch, although it's a combination of the dark gray and blue yarn, but when I complete the stitch, it is a full blue stitch. So here I have five blue half double crochet stitches. And if you're using a single crochet, you might have more. And if you're using a double crochet stitch, you'll probably have less. Now continue to count your next color sequence. Here I'm working on the dark gray. I have my third and my fourth. So here I have four dark gray stitches. Next would be the turquoise color. One, two, three, and four. I have four turquoise stitches. And light gray is my last color sequence. So I have two, three, four, four light gray. I have four colors in total, and these are the number of stitches made per color. So in order to ensure that my tension is correct, I'll continue to stitch across while ensuring that the number of stitches per color matches my earlier numbers. So I'll go ahead and continue working up my stitches. Four and five. So that matches my five blue stitches. One, two, three, and four. And that also matches up. So you'll continue to stitch all the way until the end, until you have 59 stitches in total, making sure that all your stitch count is correct. First up, I want you to go and check out planpooling.com. This is where all the magic happens. Check out that awesome argyle pattern here. 
So here it has the color column and the stitch count column. And when you click on the color column, you can pick the color, you can change to whatever color you want to match the color on your yarn, basically. And now that we know the number of stitches we have per color, go ahead and input that number and match the color to your yarn in each field. So I'm gonna go and put my numbers in and match my colors. Now once that's done, you have all your numbers input. Here you have the option of working straight or working in the round, which is great. And up here, this is where you wanna find the pattern that you're looking for. So basically, you want to play around with the number of stitches by clicking on the tabs above, which adds or remove one to five stitches. So here I have a really pretty argyle pattern. And if I add one more stitch here, I have 60 stitches. So 59 and 60 stitches is pretty much the same. Now I just want to adjust my colors a little bit to match the yarn that I have. I want this to be a bit turquoisey and this one to be slightly on the lighter blue. I think this should be it. Yeah, so this would look something like the yarn that I currently have. And if you look up here, if your first color is light gray, for example, then you will wanna put the light gray on top as a first color. So that's where the color sequence would start. Now let's get back to our first row. We've just completed 59 stitches and I've ended on the third stitch of my dark gray. And I have some excess chains, which we won't be working on. We'll just open them up later on, so that's fine. So in order to work your next stitch, we'll need to chain one to turn. However, when you make that turning chain, you do not want it to eat into your stitch count. So make sure that your turning chain is pulled tight, but it gives you enough room to adjust your next stitch. Now you'll turn your work, and on that first stitch, you'll be working your half double crochet or whatever stitch that you're working on. So I'm gonna pull my first stitch as high as a half double crochet stitch would be, and I'll work my half double crochet stitch. So because this is my fourth dark gray stitch, my turning chain did not eat into my stitch count, which is great. So now I wanna make sure that my next stitch count is correct. So for this color, it should be four stitches of the turquoise color. So here is my third stitch. And this is my fourth stitch, so it's perfect. So I'll go on and continue working the stitch while counting every stitch to make sure that my stitch count is always correct. Here's my last stitch. I'll work my half double crochet, chain one, pull it tightly, and I'll turn my work. Now before I continue on to my third row, I wanna compare it to the chart that we did earlier. So if you can look at the pattern, my next row is three stitches of the light gray. And if it matches the pattern on the chart, then I know that I'm on the right track. So I'll just continue working on the following rows, referring back to the pattern, from time to time, making sure that I count each stitch, then you've pretty much mastered plant pulling. So what happens if our numbers are off? Let me show an example. For this sequence, I should have five stitches of blue, but here I only have four. That means somewhere along the way, I must have made a few loose stitches. So in order to fix this, what I like to do is rip out the entire one color and start over by making smaller and tighter stitches. So here I'm just pulling it slightly tighter. I'm just going to pull through all loops just like that. So instead of pulling it up high like this, I'll just tighten it slightly 
and pull through all loops. So if I continue doing this, let me see if I can get five good blue stitches right here. Yes, so here I've managed to get my five blue stitches. Now here's another example which I wanna show you. If, for example, I start making really tight stitches, now on my next stitch, as you can see here, it's still a gray stitch, right? It should be turquoise. And because that's not right, I'll rip the entire color off and I'll start working really loose stitches by pulling them slightly higher. There you go. And now I have my turquoise color right after. And as always, once you've completed a row, always go back and check your pattern sample to ensure that everything looks right and you're good to carry on. If you need to join a second skein, all you have to do is join the new yarn at the end of the last color set. Now, as you can see here, turquoise is my last color set. So I'll work the last color set until the last stitch. And before closing the last stitch, I'll look for the next color sequence. In this case, it should be light gray. And I'll pull through that gray through that last stitch. I'll adjust that last stitch accordingly, making sure that the new loop on my hook should only be carrying the color light gray. And then I'll continue my stitch with that light gray while picking up the excess tail and working around it. So I'll work my half double crochet into the next chain working around the tail and making sure that my number of stitches remains the same. And once you're done, the joint should be completely invisible front and back. And that's it my friends. I hope this tutorial was fun and also helpful. And if it was, I'll be so grateful for a thumbs up. I've also made myself this cute cardigan using this pattern and I've also placed the link of this cardigan in the description box below. If you'd like to see more video tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you soon. Bye!